<clears throat> Thanks, Jersey. You're always on top of stuff. So how's it going, everybody? I'd like to welcome you back to a, another live stream, another acoustic uh, one. So uh, I am going to be going over a, a song with you guys. So as usual, there is a link in the description where you can uh, download the uh, tabs for the for the song or all the parts of the song that we're going to be going over. So how's everybody doing tonight? So who we got out there tonight? Where are we where are we watching? Where are we watching from tonight? I am actually in a really great mood. Uh, my uh, clutch showed up today for my car. I've been driving my car around now for probably two months with a clutch that is just completely shot. Uh, where the, you know, I'm I'm turning like 3,500, 4,000 RPMs to go 10 miles an hour. It's ridiculous. And anyhow, I finally got the... Uh, clutch and everything, so I'm pretty excited about that. Gonna put it in this weekend and be able to have my wheels back. All right, so like I said, they are there is um, the how old the clutch is. Uh, I'm not sure it was the clutch that was in the car when I got it. I know that it had been they had the person I bought it from had really good uh, service records. And so I had all the information of um, things that had been done. Uh, but I don't remember when that clutch was put in the clutch is screwed up. It was my own fault. I messed it up. Virginia. Play some Aldi <laughs> Uh Well, actually I do know one thing that I don't know, but the only thing is I can't, I can't hundred percent credit it if it's, uh, if it's his or not, but, um, there's a song on Friday night in San Francisco, uh, uh, Al Demiola, John McLaughlin and Paco de Lucia. There's a song called Mediterranean Sundance that, uh, me and my friend, uh, we used to just play this progression over and over again and just take turns soloing over. It was tons of fun. <laughs> Trying to remember. I can't even remember how to play it. How weird. I remember the first chord was, was E minor, and that's it. I'll have to pull. I haven't even thought about that for a long time. But Aldo Mill is a monster. He's like, you know, way above my pay grade. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully you have... Uh, download those tabs so we can we can start taking a look at this so uh the song that i i chose to do is um purple rain by prince so i know that's a kind of a a hard uh left turn from you know what we typically do um but it's a really really awesome song um i'm i'm a dyed in dyed in the wool you know prince fan from way back when uh and anyway, it's a really great song. And it's also, it's a really good song to kind of just kind of look at the way that it's structured and put together as far as the, the chord progression and everything goes. Um, and it can be really helpful for, um, in, your, in just your own playing and like, you know, songwriting and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's just really neat, some of the stuff that he's done with it. All right. So uh, I'm here on there. So the... The tabs for this is three pages. Well, three images. I guess they're not really pages. Uh, so the first part we're going to go over is just kind of the main riff, uh, really recognizable, recognizable part that that you know, that, you know, even if you, even if you're not like a fan, you, every you know, this is a pretty easily recognizable riff. So we're going to start off with a, a suspended two chord. So for that, 
uh, it's just an A major chord with a B in it. So what I'm doing is I'm fretting the uh, second fret of the D string with my second finger, and I am fretting the uh, second fret of the G string with my third finger, and then the A, B, and high E strings are open. So you're gonna um, you're gonna want to use these fingers. I mean, you could do it with like your first and second finger, but I'll show you here in a why in a second why we don't want to do that. Or for me, it's easier to do it this way. All right, so we start off. We've got this first the first note here. We're just picking this A, and it's a quarter note. And then uh, on the downbeat of two, we're gonna pick the D string. And then on the end of two, we strum just the G, B, and high E strings together. So it's like. So when we strum that, that's on that's a half note that is um, uh, taking care of the end of two and uh, all of beat three and the downbeat of uh, beat four. And then on the end of four, we're just going to pick the open low or the, the open A string again. So it's like. Now, when we hit this on the end of four, it's an eighth note and it's tied to uh, the downbeat of one on uh, measure two. So it, you, you're going to treat it like it's a quarter note as far as how long it rings out. Hi, Ian. Oh, from Scotland. Yep, I remember you because I want to go there really, really bad. Okay, so when we hit this on the first, here we've got our first measure. And then we hit this here again on the end of four. We let it ring out for the downbeat of one. And then on the end of one, so we're looking at the second measure. We're going to pick the D string and it's a quarter note. So we're picking it on the and of one, but it's ringing out for the downbeat of two. And then uh, on the end of two, we hit the A string again. And then we just pick strings, the B, G, D, and A string uh, as three and four. And. So that's the, two, the first two measures. So that whole rhythm feel there kind of continues on uh, with this. We're just going to be changing chords. So that's the first two measures. So uh, after you've practiced that, like I said, it, it'll make the rest of this of this section of the song easier because it's it's kind of similar. All right. So what we're going to do starting on measure three is we we're going to change from A suspended two to A suspended two over F sharp. So our second and third fingers are just gonna stay where we have them here on the, on the, uh, the D and the G string. But now we're gonna take our first finger and we're gonna pick up the second fret of the low E string. So we're still doing this A, uh, A suspended two chord, but now we put this F sharp in the bass. So we've got that same, uh, pattern, picking pattern that we had uh, on the first chord, but the only difference is now is that our first note we pick on the downbeat of one instead of being this A, it's this F sharp. So we have the one, two, and three, four, and. So it's it's identical timing to the, uh, um, uh, to the first measure. And then on... Uh, so we hit again, we're hitting that F sharp there on the and of four, and it's tied to the downbeat of one on measure four. So we're like, and one, and hit the G string, and then uh, that's a quarter note. So it's taking, it's, uh, it, that's taking care of the, the and of one plus the downbeat of two. And then on the and of two, hit the D string, and then just like before, starting on the B, we're going to go B, G, D, uh, three, and four, and, and on the end of four, 
we hit that uh, F sharp there because again, it's it's A suspended two over F sharp. So. Just like that. So that's the first um, four uh, measures. So uh, does anybody have any questions uh, thus far? Now, some of you, you know, you might, you know, could argue that that instead of using the second and third finger, that we could use the first and second, and then we pick up that F sharp, use your thumb. Um, that's totally fine. Uh, I'm... Uh, That, that's that totally works it's totally fine to do that but it just this doesn't work for me like you know if you've watched me before you probably heard me talk about my my thumb i screwed it up in a car accident and so it folding it around to play chords like that with my thumb uh is unpleasant to say the least so i just i just don't do it and then the other reason why is because the next chord after a suspended two over f sharp is e major so that makes that transition really easy because we're just going to move our second and third fingers down a set of strings. So now we're going to be second finger on the second fret of the A string and third finger on the second fret of the D string, and then just drop your first finger onto the first fret of the G string. So it just makes that transition a lot easier. Let's see, can we have a grunge lesson like Jerry Cantrell? Absolutely. That sounds like that sounds like a fantastic idea. What does everybody else think of that? I'm a huge Jerry Cantrell fan. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that whole grunge era, uh, Allison Chains was, they were the cream of the crop of that era. Uh, you know, a lot of people think, you know, say that, you know, it's Nirvana and Kurt Cobain. Uh, I, uh, not that anything against him or what or Nirvana or whatever, but I just really think that Alice in Chains, the sound of Alice in Chains just defined that era for me anyway. I really like him. So yeah, I'm totally down for that. <laughs> like what? Like we don't wash up. Yes. He was he was singling you out. Oh, Paul, so you're not a you're not a fan. Um, can I ask you why? Have you like uh have you um, have you listened to Alice in Chains? If you haven't, I really recommend that you do. They have some really, really awesome stuff. In fact, uh, they did that MTV Unplugged thing back in the day. And uh, most of it, if not all of it, is available to watch on YouTube. And if you've never watched that, I recommend you watch it. It, it was just absolutely amazing. All right. So moving along. First two measure or first four, four measures again. And then come to the E. So this is on measure five. So again, we have the same, the same timing like we had before. So we're gonna hit the open low E string on the on for beat one, and then the second fret of the D string for uh, the downbeat of two, and then strum the first three strings for the and of two plus uh, beat three, the downbeat of four, and then on the and of four, we hit that D string again. It's an eighth note, and again, it's tied to the downbeat of that next measure. Then on the and of one, low E, B, B, G, D, As an old Aussie, I was more into other styles, but I have to listen to it. Yeah, um, like I said, you know, check it out. It's it's really good. Um, now, one thing to kind of keep in mind when you're listening to that kind of stuff, especially if, you know, uh, I'm not 100% sure of what it is that you are into. Uh, but um, with 
with bands like Alice in Chains, a lot of people like they get turned off on the on the vocals, which I just don't understand. I thought they had like amazing vocals and their harmony together was really good. But um, I'll, I'll stop fanboying on them. Oh, thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Yeah, I've, um, I like it. And, you know, I just put new strings on it a couple of weeks ago. And every time I put new strings on it, I'm like, oh, this guitar sounds really good. And then I'll just keep playing the same old crappy strings for months until I forget. But one day I do want to get me a tailor. All right. So that's the first um, six measures. And then uh, starting on measure seven, oh, bluegrass and blues. Um, me as well, actually. I love bluegrass stuff. I can't really play a lot of it because a lot of those players are, are like way beyond my my pay grade but i really like this stuff so and there's a lot of blues type elements in alice and chains's music and jerry cantrell's playing oh you got a looper pedal cool what kind did you get all right so starting on measure seven um we're going, we're going to transition from that e major and we're going to transition to d suspended two uh, oh, you use your thumb? Yeah, I mean, that, that's cool. If you can use your thumb, it's just for me. I don't even ever, it doesn't even cross my mind to do it because it's, 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 it just doesn't like to do that. Sometimes I can get away with doing like a D over F sharp with my thumb. Uh, all right, so D suspended two. Just take your regular D major chord and you just take your middle finger off so that the high E string is open. And now we're gonna we're gonna pick that same timing again, but now we're gonna start on the D string. So we'll have D, G, and then G, B, and E together. So and then we hit the D string again on the and the four, just like we did on all the other ones. So. And then that's tied to the downbeat of one on measure eight. And then for the end of one, we hit the G string to the D string. And then we go all the way up, uh, starting on the high E. We go E, B, G, D, three and four and. And that is like, that's like that whole progression. That's that whole, that whole section. Uh, what you, you're buying? You're buying the pedals without the stencils on their name, the name on it, or you or. Uh, Or on the Martin guitar. Oh, let's see. Nah, pedal. Nah, Paul. The X and Road series start around five fifty. Huh? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that either. That's pretty interesting. All right. So anyhow, that's that whole part. Sorry, I get. You know, I keep getting uh, uh, sidetracked here. So. So that that um, progression right there, it's like the main, you know, the main riff of the song. So that's like the intro to the song. And then once the uh, vocals kick in, uh, it's that same thing. So I guess it would be, you know, you would consider that the, uh, um, the verse. So now we go to page two. We have the verse. We have some, some repetition here.
Oh, okay. I get it. Huh. That's cool. Uh, send me a, a link uh, later on, Jersey. I'm, I'd be kind of interested to kind of check that stuff out. Um, okay. So when it, when it uh, goes into uh, that, that verse section, it goes through all that, you know, when I was just playing through the, all that with the verse. Um, and then at the end of the verse, see, so it goes through it uh, all the way through the progression once is the intro. And then it goes through it all the way again in the verse. And then it starts it uh, a third time in the verse, but then it has a change. So in this third time, we start off the same way with the A the A suspended two to the A suspended two over F sharp. And then I got to flip the page here. And then now we're going to go to E, but instead of arpeggiating it, we're just going to strum it uh, as eighth notes. So we have an entire measure, one and two and three and four and, and then half of a measure on top of that. So you'll have one and two and three and four and one and two and to just a regular A major on the downbeat of three. And then it just rests. So that's like the... So I'm, I'm going to spare you my, uh, my uh, singing. Um, so after it does, it hits he hits that A, then it, it rests on beat four, and then it rests, then there's a two four bar, so it rests for two more beats. So this is something that like kind of valid to bring up for those of you who maybe not understand uh, understand this kind of stuff. So when you look at, um, well, I can actually see where I made a mistake on here. Well, I'll explain. I'll explain here in just a second. So if you go back to the very beginning, uh, at the very first of it, up at the, on the, you know, you're looking at the music part where on measure one, it has where it says, you know, four over four. So for those of you don't know, that's, don't know, that's uh, the time signature. So how you can think about this is that the bottom number is in reference to what type of beat that they're referring to. And then the top number is how many. So four, four means that you're going to have four quarter notes because four uh, quarters would be four, right? So you're going to have four uh, quarter notes or the equivalent of four quarter notes per measure. So that could be four quarter notes, a whole note, a half, two half notes, a half note, two quarter notes, eight eighth notes, 16, you know, 16, 16th notes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when we get to on the uh on page three up at the top that last measure on the first staff uh, measure 23 it says two four so what that's meaning is is that now it's quarter notes but there's only two because what it is that it amounted to is that he was like one, one and two and three four one two and then it goes into the next part of the song that's where he, the guitar rests but it's actually I think that that's where he's uh, purple rain, purple rain, and then it goes into the into the chorus. Uh, now, where it goes onto that chorus right there, it should say four four again to let you know that it's gone back to four four. But I messed up and I didn't do that apparently, so. My bad. So just remember that, that after that one, that's just a single measure of two, four, and then it goes back to four, four after that. So does anybody have any questions on any of that? Like what I was just talking about with time signatures or anything, because this seems to be something that uh, th there seems to be a lot of confusion about, especially when with things like that, like throwing the two, four in there. Or even like if there's like a one four bar, there's lots of different things like that that can be thrown in there. So if anybody has it, you know, isn't sure about that or how that works, uh, you know, feel free to, you know, ask and we can spend some time and explain it because we got, we have plenty of time. 
And aside from that, does anybody have any questions on any of what we went over thus far or just any guitar related questions in general? Uh, I'm a, uh, you know, that's what we're here for. Let's see, I believe understanding and reading music is important. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, as far as actually going through and um, learning how to actually sight read for guitar um, is uh, pretty tough. Um, it Because you have to, you know, you learn where the notes are on the staff and then you have to find um, where those notes are, you know, on the guitar. And on a, and it's not just guitar, it's really just any like fretted instrument. Uh, you can have the same note played in multiple places. So like, you know, you can play E here, here, and here, and it's all the same octave. So when you're looking at the sheet music, you're like, well, do, where do they want me to play it? So then you have to learn how to read what's called reading in positions. And it's, and it's really complicated. Uh, so that's where, you know, tab makes it easier, but the tab doesn't tell you the timing. So that's why like the transcriptions that I do, if you know, you're looking at it, you can see that there's the, the notation and the tab. So that way you can look at the notation and identify, oh, this is a quarter note or this is an eighth note or whatever, and, you know, be able to count it out. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're playing a song from tab that you know what it sounds like, that's, that's different. But if you're playing something that you've never heard before and you have no idea how it's supposed to sound without being able to actually read the notation as far as the timing, it, it, you know, you're just guessing at that point. Oh, thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. Jersey, you started with learn reading music. Yeah, I did too. Um, I had been playing for, uh, I don't know, probably three or four years before I ever even seen Tab. And uh, I, I can still remember the first thing I ever saw as Tab. I, I went to the grocery store with my parents and I went over and looked at the magazines and I picked up a, uh, uh, a guitar for the practicing musician and it had a transcription for flying high again and Randy Rhodes was on the cover. So I bought it and I come home and I start looking at it with the tab and I'm like, what the hell is this? And I just, I never, it took me a long time to uh, embrace it and actually understand it. It was like, and now I look at it and I don't even understand why I was confused, but, uh, but I really was at first. Uh, Hi, Thomas. Um, no, you're, you're totally cool uh, being off subject or whatever. Like I said, it, it's, well, it's not off subject. It's still guitar related. So it's, you know, it's a guitar, Q, you know, Q and A. Uh, what is a good price to pick up a Korean made Telecaster set neck? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm kind of out of the loop on a lot of that kind of stuff because I haven't really bought any new gear for ever. I mean, I haven't bought a, an electric guitar in over 10 years. I haven't bought an acoustic guitar since I bought this in like, I got this in like 92 or 93. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Uh, but, uh, I'm thinking that maybe, you know, looking on Amazon, I mean, you can find everything else on there that might be on there. Or if anybody else out there has any suggestions uh, for, for Thomas. Oh, so, oh, you're asking if it's a good price. The guy wants to sell. Okay, you're looking at somebody selling a guitar and they want 500 bucks and you're wondering if it's a good price. Mm, again, not really sure. Uh, is it somebody local where you can like actually go and look at it? Or is it something just like online? Because if it's something that you can actually go look at it, then I would recommend just going and uh, checking it out, sitting down and playing it, 
I have bought guitars before that I probably paid too much for just simply because I really liked it. I mean, that's what it all boils down to. Uh, if, you know, if you really like the guitar, then it might be, uh, then it's, you know, could be worth it. Oh, so your boss has it. Yeah. I would just, I would just play it and check it out, get all of the, the, uh, the specs on it. You can get like, you know, like what year it was made, you know, things like that, what actually the model is. And then um, look it up on Reverb and just see, check Reverb and eBay and see what other people are, you know, what people have been selling them for, buying them for. You can get a pretty good idea that way. Oh, there's six to seven hundred on Reverb. Well, yeah, I mean, if he's got it for five, then and and it's nice and you like it, then then yeah, then that's probably that's probably a good deal. All right, so. Um, the other part of this uh, that I want to show you is actually the chorus. So for the chorus, we've got just the same chords that we've already been playing, but instead of arpeggiating it, we're just going to we're going to strum it now. So we're going to start with we have D, and it's. Uh, So we've got two quarter notes, two sixteenth notes, an eighth note, and then a quarter note. So we, it's going to be like one, two, three, e and four, three, e and four. So as a general rule, you can kind of think of it like when you have quarter notes in a, you know, in a strum, that they are downstrokes. So that's why I'm going one, and then for beat three, it's two sixteenth notes and then an eighth note. So here I'll go down, up, down for three, E, and, and then four is a quarter note again. So we get another uh, downstroke. So it's like. So you have two measures. Uh, uh, of D just like that. And then it goes to a suspended two. And now we've got the same strum. One, two, three, and four. This time we only got a single measure of it. And then we're going to go to the a suspended two over F sharp. So just again, just keep that same shape. Put your first finger on the second fret of the low E same strum. One, And then just like the end of the verse, go back to an E major and it's all eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one, two, three, four. And then it would just go into whatever the next part of the song was. So those are the two progressions that make up pretty, make pretty much make up the, uh, the whole song. <clears throat> now, uh, what I was just saying a minute ago about with the strums, you know, like on the downstrokes or, or the uh, the quarter notes, I would do like downstrokes. Now, typically, if a rhythm like this that's eighth notes, I would like play a downstroke on the downbeat and then an upstroke on the offbeat or the and. So like one and two and three and four and but in this particular thing, it's more kind of driving and it's all downstrokes. So the difference, you know, three, four, one, and two, and it's just it's just kind of a, a little bit of a tonal difference. And then having those downstrokes really kind of puts some umph on it, you know, makes it, you know, like da, 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 da. Uh, is why, you know, I do it that way. But yeah, so that is um, that is all of the uh, the parts. Um, yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't wrong, and yeah, that's all of the, um, the parts for this. So it's uh, it's not too tough to play, but like I said, it's it's just a really it's just a good song, I think, and a cool chord progression.
So at the beginning, I was talking about how you could use uh, this as kind of give you some ideas for stuff with doing your own uh, uh, songwriting. When you take a chord like this A suspended two, so you can, that chord, you know, you could go from there to a, uh, to a C, you know, I mean, there's like a million different chords you can do, but it sounds really good when you keep a lot of the, uh, the tonality of the chord, but you just change another note, especially like a, a, a bass note and then keep the, you know, the, the higher notes is like the melody the same. So it's an easy way to kind of move around. I mean, it's, it's done in lots and lots and lots of songs. Uh, like remember we did, we did wonderful tonight um, a while back. So for that one, we go from G to uh, D over F sharp. And you can, couple of ways that you know you can do that but it's the same thing we're keeping a lot of these notes in the high the high melody the same and then we're just changing the bass note and it it can really it's just an easy way to uh to get like a cool sound without having to switch to like a completely other um um give you another chord voicing without actually full on changing to another shape. And uh, you can experiment around with this. You don't have to necessarily go off of it from a, um, like a music theory aspect where you're, uh, you know, going, oh, okay, well, I'm playing this and I'm in this key. So now I got to go to this note. You don't necessarily need to do that. A good way to do it is just to play, take a chord that you like, that you like the sound of, and then just take a vacant finger if you have one. I mean, if you're playing like G, it's not going to be as easy to do this. But if you do it with a chord, you know, like like E minor, or A suspended to, you know, something where you're not doing, where you're only using a couple of fingers and you have, you know, one or two fingers free, then you can just start reaching for notes that are nearby to see what you think sounds good. It's so like we can do this E minor. As it is in the E minor, I reached up and I grabbed G here, and then bring it down to this F sharp, and then back to the uh, um, E. And you can do it with other, you know, other strings. So you can end up getting this whole melody out of this. Now you've just taken your your you know your basic E minor chord and you've just you know you've expanded it, added some other uh, notes in there. And like I said, you don't have to do it from a, a you know music theory thing. Just reach for notes that you can reach and use your ear. If it sounds good, it is. You know, if you if you like the way it sounds, then it's it's good. The you know I've probably said this a billion times, but if you learning music theory is good. It's it's extremely helpful. It's like learning a language, but don't think of it them. Don't think of all that as is rules. Just think of it as guidelines. That these are things that if you do these things, yeah, everything's going to work. But there's lots and lots of cool things that sound really great that are aren't in key necessarily. All right. So, does anybody else have any other uh, questions or anything? link to a beginner reading guitar music. Um, oh, thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. So Jersey, are you, is that a statement or a question? Mm -hmm. 
am I still, can you still see me and hear me? It just popped up that damn internet connection thing again. But I must still be here because of it. Oh, you sent me a YouTube link. Oh, uh, it didn't come up here in the, the feed. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just have a lot of a lot of issues because of my terrible Comcast Internet service or Xfinity or whatever you want, whatever they're calling themselves now. Uh All right. Well, it doesn't appear that I missed anything in there. So, uh, you know, we made it through that uh, song. So we still have a little bit of time if, you know, if anybody has questions or anything. And if not, then we can we can wrap it up, too. And I'm not sure if it was in, the, in this video, but there's also... Uh, um, uh, there's also a link in there, or there, I'm assuming that it's in there, <laughs> a link where you can um, you can download a free chord chart uh, from your guitar control. It's actually really, really helpful. Um, it's condensed, so it's like on a single sheet, you can print it out, and then it has uh, small, clear diagrams of just about any chord you could ever imagine you would need for anything that you're playing. Now, obviously, it doesn't have every single voicing, but it's just so you know you could play whatever. It's really, really useful. Thank you, Paul. I really appreciate that. Melbourne, Australia. Cool. Australia is another place I'd like to go. But the, I guess a flight from here to there is 23 hours. And I don't think that I could, I would survive that. And then I watch too much Discovery Channel and stuff. And y'all got some big, crazy snakes and lizards and spiders and stuff there that I'm not really too down to go and uh, hang out with either. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, if nobody has any other questions or anything, um, then I think we can wrap it up. But I really appreciate everybody being here. Um, if you like the content, you know, what I'm doing, you know, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, uh, leave comments, all that kind of stuff. It, you know, all that helps with that whole, you know, YouTube algorithm thing and uh and it also helps them know that I'm doing a good job, you know. So uh, if you like what I'm doing, uh, you know, show me some love. Oh, that's great, Ian. I'm glad you, en you enjoyed it. Five-foot bats. They probably don't even play baseball over their jersey. Yeah, I don't care if a bat is this big or if it's 20 feet across. I'm not a fan of them. It's just a rat with wings, so not really. <laughs> you're, you're welcome, Rick. That's that's great. It's, it, it's a really good song, and I think, I think it's kind of sad that a lot of people probably miss, have really never, they missed out on Prince because, uh, because he was weird. You know, I mean, a lot of people just, they don't like the whole, you know, weird thing, you know, weird dressing or that whole thing when he didn't want to be called Prince, he just wanted to be a symbol, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, it's weird. Artists are, are you know, great artists like him are, you know, are weird. That's just the way that it is. Um, but he had a lot of really, really good music and um, super talented. I mean, God, he could play every instrument i mean like a lot of their a lot of his albums i mean he played everything you every in every sound you hear coming off there was him and i just think that's really really amazing uh yeah again thanks thank you everybody for for coming out i really appreciate it you know uh 
click the link, get your get your free tabs for the song, get get your get your chord chart, all that good stuff. Like, subscribe, yada yada. You know the routine. Everybody says all this stuff, and you know, and I'm required to do it too. So there you have it. But again, I really appreciate y'all coming out. Uh, uh, these are these are just getting better and better all the time. Lots of fun. Anyway, uh, I plan on being back here tomorrow, same time. Uh, I have not a clue as to what we'll be doing, but um, I'll figure it out before then. But again, thanks everybody for coming out. I really, Musical Prince was better than Michael. Huh? Are you referring to Michael Jackson? Uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I'm I'm a much bigger fan of Prince than I was of Michael Jackson, and I like Michael Jackson. He had, he had a lot of really good stuff. He was uh, pretty smart with arrangements and stuff like that. I thought, uh, but yeah, I think uh, Prince was on a whole other level, whole other caliber. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for me tonight. Thanks again, everybody, for coming out. I really appreciate it. And I will uh, be back tomorrow, same time. Have a good night, everybody.